I cannot believe I allowed myself to fall for such a deceptive move. The killer knew I would ask for an alibi, and they knew how to cover their tracks perfectly. The only people I can think about doing that is Babanin and then Zachariah, because Zachariah has seen Poroi's work before. I have the upper hand. The killer believes that I have extinguished all avenues of my questioning, unaware I know the truth of the fire. But I don't know about the fire. I, I don't wish Monsieur Hastings were here. I was perhaps too harsh with him. You were. I know of his want for the same as I, the truth. But now I fear that I have lost him to my own tenacious demeanor. Now more than ever do I need my little gray cells working at full capacity. Monsieur Demir and Mademoiselle Babania. I am glad to say that they both still have alibis, as the show had just reached its second act. Oh. So, the two people that I thought it was, wasn't it? I can it? be sure that neither was involved. Are you sure? Mademoiselle Farqua. She claims that she was in the dark room developing pictures. And even with this new discovery, her alibi stands. Monsieur Dryden can confirm. Monsieur Christiansen, one of my key suspects, drinking alone except for a brief encounter with Monsieur Demir. But Madame Allen can substantiate his trip to see her at the theater to apologize during the intermission. Which leads us to the good Madame Allen, on stage performing. Innocent. A side note, I must make an effort to see her production. From what I have heard, she sounds quite captivating. <laughs> the Honorable right. Bishop Mountjoy. His Compline prayers had not yet begun, but Mademoiselle Warbeck and he were together in what I can only imagine to be an uncomfortable meeting for them both. Her innocence has already been confirmed. Although upon learning of how she has been treated, I would not have been surprised. Last but certainly not least, Monsieur Aylesworth and the article in the newspaper documenting his, as some see, heroic speech amongst the House of Commons is alibi enough for the murder. And where are we left now? Every suspect seemingly as innocent as they were yesterday. But when one looks most innocent, that is when Detective Poirot is most suspicious. Sorry, I got a text. Okay. Where are we going? What's the goal? We have no- I- Talk to Zachariah. Ooh, I think it's- If it's Zachariah and Babanin working together, that's gonna be shocking. And there he is. What's the second cup of coffee for, huh? Finally a face I can trust. Everything all right, Poirot? I'm afraid things could not be further from all right. Don't tell me the famous detective Poirot is stumped. Stumped? No. Perplexed? Oui. Perhaps you can be my perfect distraction. Do you so you think it's Zechariah too? What's that? I may not be the celebrated doctor that my father hoped for, but I still like to keep up with recent medical journals. And what is the latest discovery? Oh! Cocaine is an alkaloid extract from the leaf of Elole co uh, coca plant, which usually grows in South America. It's most available, common for being a hydrochloride salt, which it can be taken orally intranasally or intravenously uh the peak effect ranges from 1 to 90 minutes depending on the of administration cardiovascular effects of cocaine use the most common symptoms of cocaine users in chest is chest pain and the most common cardiac arrest dis <gasps> cardiac disorders uh cocaine intake other cardiac problems may include cardiomyopathy and arrhythmias cocaine increases heart rate blood pressure and mitocardial Contracts, the, the, why so many big words? All of which increase uh, myocardial oxygen demand. With increasingly availability, the number of cocaine users continues to escalate, with many finding what can be considered positive effects of the drug outweighing the potential and likely hazardous risks. Did, did, what's his name? He just said his name. Did Mr. Green? Was Mr. Green the cocaine user? This particular article is about the effect of cocaine on the user's body. 
I thought I liked to have a good time, but that drug, too much for me. Yeah, only weed for you. What makes you say that? I wouldn't want my heart beating at the speed of a locomotive. Here, read for yourself. Have you seen Monsieur Aylesworth since his heart attack? I haven't, actually. I gave him my office telephone number and said he could call any time, but not a peep. You sound surprised. Yeah, he probably wants to keep his health issues out of the public eye. Hence me offering to help, but he seems to be just fine. Surprisingly. You question Monsieur Aylesworth's health? Do you think there is a chance he could have faked it all? Who is that? Freaking outside. Uh, yes, I do, actually. How those little gray cells of yours work sometimes. Amazing. Please, my friend. So there was cocaine. Actually, there was cocaine on the bench in the West Wing, right? And then he was kind of there in the West Wing hall. So what if he took cocaine, thought he was having a heart attack, and then wasn't having a heart attack? And in reality, it was just his heart pumping too much for him to, like, take it. You're serious? Don't know why, but I suppose he could have. Heart attacks kill people. At this point, anything is a possibility. I think a visit to Monsieur Aylesworth at the Royal Society of Art is in order. Mademoiselle Babania, a pleasure as always. Good morning, gentlemen. I love how she talks. Her lips move like butter. I'm afraid my pleasantries are to be cut short this morning. I have a most pressing matter. Yep, we gotta go. Bye! I, okay, sorry. I, I don't... I mean, he already said that we can't talk to her. Bye! How many days has this been? Hercule, you need to sleep. It was nighttime last night. Unless you did sleep. Then I hope you slept well. Otherwise, we would have a really rough night. Mortimer's office. Just a moment. Ooh. I'm coming. What a great commotion coming from behind the door. What on earth is Monsieur Aylesworth up to? He is hiding ah, something. Detective, what can I do for you? Could you spare a moment of your time? If you are feeling up to it. Why wouldn't I? You are recovering from a potentially fatal heart attack. I would not want to aggravate or upset you in any way. Your movements on the night of Mademoiselle Quartzmite's death. Uh, are we really going over this again? Yes. It would help me clear up some discrepancies. Very well. As I've said before, I was in the House of Commons addressing the bench, as you know. And then I was speaking with the reporter. The editor, Nathaniel Dryden. If you say so. At the news office. Monsieur Aylesworth is sticking to his story. I did not expect that it would be easy to unsettle a politician of his experience. You have not contacted Monsieur and Demir. And why would I? And why would I? Oh, to thank him for his help at the museum. Yes, of course. Uh, I've been meaning to send him a thank you gift. One would think that thanking the man that saved your life would be further up your priorities. I'm a very busy man, as I'm sure you understand. And I don't know whether I'd go as far as saying he saved my life. That's because you weren't having a heart attack, you loser. I don't trust Mr. Green anymore. It was Mr. Green with the candle. On the contrary. Had Monsieur Demir not been there with his extensive medical training and a man of your age, perhaps you would not be here talking with me today. If Monsieur Aylesworth is not prepared to tell the truth, Perhaps I can use his own pompous nature and guilt against him. The nurse said herself that I had the heart of a young athlete. It'll take more than that to slow me down. Well, I would not take that as a sign to start the spotting career. <laughs> Merci, monsieur. I find myself in a most problematic position. My associate, monsieur Hastings, is nowhere to be found when I need him the most. There must be someone else that I can call upon. Someone to fill the shoes of Monsieur Hastings. For the time being, at least. The obvious choice would be Monsieur Demir. But I wonder if he is suited to the task that is required. I'm sure he is. Zachariah is really good. He's so smug and cool. I like him. Oh, Zachariah! Watch him be dead. I wonder why they brought him back. He seems to have no effect so far. And we're in, what, chapter 8? 
Whatever you need. <laughs> okay. I must get. Ah, uh, Babini. Good morning, Mademoiselle. My apologies for my earlier departure. That's quite all right. Mr. Demir informed me of the facts. The case has taken a direction I had not foreseen, and it now leaves me. <sighs> Sorry, I hate I it. I will not stand here and listen to you wallow. How can I help? I have a rather unusual request. Leave. Go on. I require a distraction. I promise you will come to no harm and... Uh... Who am I to distract and from what? Monsieur Aylesworth. I need to gain access to his office without his watchful eye. Detective Poirot? Preparing to cross the line of law? Not cross. Merely tiptoe alongside. I assume you have already devised a plan? A requested tour of the Royal Society of Art Building should give me appropriate time. Then that is what I shall do. The door has been left ajar, exactly as required. I could hear Monsieur Ellsworth fumbling around behind his door on my last visit. And combined with his hesitation to open his door to me, I can presume he had something he did not want Detective Poirot to see. Okay. New mind map. Finally. Good mind maps now. I'm getting them back to back. Speaking with Monsieur Demir, my suspicion has only increased. Could Monsieur Aylesworth have faked his heart attack? I must speak to him. Yeah, I said from the beginning that he faked his heart attack. Chess set. A beautiful chess set, although the queen is missing. And there's a gun here. Okay. A bookshelf, a globe. There's a lot of stuff to look at here. Ah. One would usually find such furniture is filled with a variety of alcohol. This is not. It's full of cocaine. Collection of different texts. Ah. He's certainly well read. Okie dokie. Um, obviously the safe's there. Nothing here. Okay. Oh, the poor bear heads. Hmm. There's the queen. One step closer to revealing the truth. A ah. gun! A spoon likely from a set ICS is engraved. ICS? A snuff spoon? Is that for his cocaine? Hmm. One must be careful with firearms around, especially when left in an unlocked drawer. And ah. then... Aha! The missing queen, such an important and integral part of one's force, should not be so carelessly discarded. Are we gonna pick up the queen? Do we... Can we pick up the queen? Or... Oh! Ah! Chess set, queen cheese, che cheese, queen chess peed on the floor. A fallen queen, almost as disastrous as a fallen king. Chess set was knocked over. Acting suspicious? Something just... No. Chess set was knocked over. Wooden thump sound. Okay. How could how clumsy of him? Monsieur Ellsworth knocked the chess set over on his way to answer the door. Chess set was knocked over. Okay, bookshelf. What's the glass noises then? Globe glass noises? Hmm. Monsieur Ellsworth moved the globe, causing the bottles inside the Oh Globe moved. Chess knocked over? I must act on. No. Globe move has to be a part of it, right? Globe moved. Uh. I should not be surprised ah, by I my can. own okay. deduction. It's possible Monsieur Ailsworth was up to something by the bookshelf. Monero was at the bookshelf. Okay, let's take a little peeky peeky at the bookshelf. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What was that? Go wait. Gro groove on the floor. Groove. It's a groove. There's a man-made groove on the floor where the globe was positioned. So can we slide? When I return home, I shall check every bookshelf and crevice of the house. It almost appears almost mandatory to have a hidden room. What uh, this one withholds, I can only imagine. The wicked and banal smell of English tea. Put your hands up and step away from there. Monsieur, there is no need. Enough of your phony pleasantries. 
Let's see what the real police have to say. Where's Babenin? The first thing they would notice is the politician aiming his revolver at an officer while they are conducting official police business. I'm sure they would agree. I have every right to protect myself from a foreign intruder. If you were to lower the gun, perhaps we could discuss the situation we find ourselves in. You may have authority in your own country, but not here. Now, uh, explain yourself. It appears I must choose my words carefully here. Oh, no. Oh, oh, okay. We better not be on a timer because this is a lot to read. What is your plan now? You have an officer of the law, a visitor to your country held at gunpoint. I encourage you to call the authorities. Perhaps they'll be interested to take a look around themselves. I'm sure the newspaper would most would be most enthralled to hear a story of a politician that faked a heart attack in the name of insurance fraud. What would he care about the most? He just said he can lie to the officers. So the third one? You don't know what you're talking about. If that's true, why am I here? There are no victims to your crimes. You still have the chance to end it here. There's no coming back from wait. What may come next if you don't drop the gun? I I don't know. Threatening is not the way. There are no victims. Enough. I need a second to think about all this. He's staggering. How has it all come to this? No, it's not my fault. It it's. It is not too late. Your intentions were good. Scotland Yard will look sympathetically at. If you had just left that fool Hardwick to it, we wouldn't be here, and I wouldn't have to do this. I have done nothing but remain honorable to my oath to uphold the law. It is Monsieur's choices and actions that have brought us to this point, and he must accept responsibility for what is to come. Moro, are you all right? All the better for seeing you, Hastings. Oh my gosh. I was worried I was going to miss him. Your timing and accuracy could not have been more parfait. Perfect. What do we do now? We kill him. We take our leave. No, what go to the bookshelf. Him? Will he be okay? He shall be fine. But the bookshelf! not envious of the sore head he will awake to. Come, there is much to tell. Behind the bookshelf. And I never. What was behind the bookshelf? I want to know! Monsieur Dryden, how are you? Detective Poirot. Yes, of course. What can I do for you? Is Mademoiselle Farquhar working today? She is, but not here, I'm afraid. Oh. Do you know where she is? She said something about heading back to the museum. Would you allow us to access into your dark For what, room? exactly? Evidence, my brother! Forgive me. I recently inherited a number of belongings from a deceased relative, including an undeveloped spool of film. I'd like to help, but there isn't anyone here that could develop them for you. I'm more than capable. And I'll leave it tidier than when we arrived. Hey, Steve. In that case, knock yourselves out. I've got a meeting to run to anyway. I shouldn't be longer than half an hour or so. Well done. Where has this confident and daring version of Monsieur Hastings been hidden? Right? We all have a hidden side. It's just our own choice of when to show it. Now Hastings is becoming a tolerable person. <laughs> I love Hastings. He saved me. Hey. So our first step is... Creepy. Don't tell me there is something the great Detective Poirot doesn't know. I must concede that photography is something I have little experience in. Lucky I'm here, then. We need to start with a tray filled with developing fluid. Oh, you actually Next, do know. Next, pour the fixer fluid into another tray and then add the photographic paper. I have a newfound respect for those that make such activities look so simple. Yeah, because I already Let's forgot all that. Let's just wait until we see the results. It shouldn't take long. I shall use my time wisely and see what truths in this room may hold. It's very creepy. Uh... Hastings guarding the door. We love it. That's the photo paper. Stop it. What is this? I believe this is for producing. Okay. Um, Cupboard under the sink. 
Let's take a look at you here. Mm -hmm. What was that? Did I blink? Oh, I'm clipping. Dalton Farms, Belfast. What? What am I? No label, infuriating. I will never understand how people can work in such amateur fashions. <laughs> Is this it? Ah. I was want to know what's inside if it doesn't have the appropriate information. The answer was starting to was staring at me in the face. Was it no? Uh, ooh, office evidence. Groove on the floor. Bookshelf. Okay. <laughs> Not, nothing. <laughs> Yay, I did it. <laughs> Trays. Oh, a hat. A hat. A tray for liquid relating to the development process. Yes, but what the, I want the hat. Aha. Uh -huh. Mademoiselle Farqua has a hat that looks almost identical to the one... Oh. Mademoiselle Corsmith wore to the gala. New had seen that style somewhere before. Oh. Okay. Um, so let's get our photo paper. You specifically in the development of photographs. And then a radio. A window. Huh. Music can make even the most labor uh, laborious tasks more manageable. Oh yeah, look at all this. I should have just had it like this. There's so much information. Not information. I believe this is used to probe. Okay. Oh. The window is painted shut. Painted. All right, let's use this. Photo paper. I believe this is for producing photographic prints. Perhaps the photograph paper is what's required. One step, okay. Oh, photographic developer. Essential in the development of photographs. Okay, and now I can... I don't really... <laughs> Hastings help. Hastings help, I'm yet? stupid. The unlabeled bottles. You want the photographic fixer? And how would one know it from another? It smells like ammonia. Handy, I suppose, when you can't see much in here. Bitter almonds, a distinct smell of potassium cyanide. Ammonia, just as Monsieur Hastings said. Mademoiselle Farquhar had access to the same poison that killed Mademoiselle Quartzmythe. One does not believe in coincidences. Ah, we must discuss Mademoiselle Farquhar. We've already been over this, Poirot. I don't want to argue. I have no intentions of continuing our previous conversation. What we must address now is her potential guilt. Ooh. She didn't steal the painting, though. We know that. Her guilt in Mademoiselle Gottsmite's murder. Mademoiselle Farquaad could be our murderer. Oh, because of... <laughs> we did, because of a hat? No. No, we don't. We don't know. We don't know. Merci. We don't know. I do want to know what was behind that bookshelf, darn it. Um, here we go. For the trays, we are using photo fixer. Perhaps the photo fixer is what is required. Logical thinking, okay. Then we use the developer. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh, is there a problem? There shouldn't be, but... There must be light coming in from somewhere. Is that what? not the point of a dark room? That it will allow no light in to damage the photographs? We need to find where the light's coming in from and damaging the prints. You what? continue your work, and I shall find the curious light source. Uh, this thing? It's the only thing that's a bit yellow. This thing? No. Is it the window? Light switch. Oh. If I am to see what surrounds me, I must illuminate the room. Why is this so creepy? Okay. I hate it. Why is it terrifying? It's the window. Right? I can't interact with anything. Hercule, I'm scared. Oh. So it's the window. The window is merely appears. The window looks out onto the back lane. The trusted handkerchief, perfect to patch up any gaps of incoming light. Oh, that was creepy. So it's good now, right? Tray of liquid. 
Do I have to double check? Um, Hastings? Monsieur Hastings, may we talk a moment? I'm in the middle of developing these. Can it wait? I'm afraid not. Uh, Mademoiselle could be a murderer. Why? Mademoiselle Farquhar could have exited the dark room via window. Mr. Poirot, you are a genius. I am! Thank you. Mademoiselle, did Mr. Dryden say he never heard anything happen? The radio. Mr. Poirot, you are a genius. Oh, stop it, Hastings. Uh, could Mr. Colsham not spot Miss Farquaad entering the flat because of the hat? That would never have even occurred to me. I've got a lot to learn. Look, this photograph is just about finished. What? Why is this creepy? Why is everything creepy? Why is she missing an eye? Why is she missing an eye? Were they sisters? Twins? This makes no sense to me. Okay. Is that? It appears so. And what has she got in her hand? That can't be the same cigarette case. The cigarette case that was taken from Mademoiselle Farquhar's luggage on our voyage here. It appears Mademoiselle Farquhar had a much closer relationship with Mademoiselle Cotsmythe. I would say they... Cousins. Oui, monsieur. Hastings, I must thank you. For what? Allowing myself to be enticed by Miss Farquhar's feminine nature. Yeah, for being a simp. For saving me from whatever Monsieur Aylesworth and his revolver had planned. Aww. If it wasn't for me licking my wounds, you wouldn't have been there alone in the first place. You're fine, it's fine, and it's over with. if you were, and not at the Coltsmide estate, we would never have made such revelations. You are one of the most honest and authentic fellows I have met. You cannot allow a misguided moment of red-blooded male instinct to taint that. Oh, I love you it! You have never let yourself fall to the wicked ways of the fairer sex. <laughs> no. And that is a day I cannot even fathom. Oh, that's it! <laughs> chapter 9 is the last chapter, right? I think With this is the Hastings last chapter. The uh, stop, 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 stop. Okay, stop being here. Like I said in the last video, I am pushing through this. And then I guess the next video is the last one. And so far, Farquaad's the murderer. Zachariah and Bevanine are here and did nothing about it. I don't know. I don't know. But I am so excited. I hope we get answers about the bookshelf. I hope we get answers. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And I guess I'll just see you in the next one.